on. Is there a man that's willing to be that man? Is there one that's willing to be that man? May we let us pray tonight and then we'll get into the message that God's got for us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the day that you've allowed us, Lord, to come to your house. God, we thank you, Lord, for the blessing, Lord, that we've, that we've got, Lord, to be able to come and worship freely. God, be able to come and read your word, be able to come and pray. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done, Lord, for all that you've given us. God, you're so good to us, Lord. We're so undeserving. God, we thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me in my life. Thank you, Lord, that you've placed me around some of those men, God, that will stand, that will stand in the gap. God, that are willing to stand, Lord, for what is right. God, we thank you. Lord, help us tonight. Lord, help us, Lord, to be obedient, Lord, exactly, Lord, what you want us to do tonight. Lord, each and every aspect, Lord, may we, may we listen to what you want us to do. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, help our pastor tonight. God, I pray to Lord that you touch him. Lord, please. Lord, we need you. Lord, we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, just a little, just a little back story right here. This is, you know, the prophet Ezekiel speaking here, and he's, the, Israel's done some pretty rough stuff. If you want to, if it's sickening what they've been, what they've done, what they've got themselves into. If you want to, I ain't going to get into it, but if you want to get, look back to it, look back at just the first of the chapter, and it really gets in depth on just how sickening and how, how, uh, how far these people had gotten from God. And this says right here, as you remember, well, as you remember in uh, the book of Genesis, God would have, uh, he would have spared Sodom and Gomorrah for just 10 righteous. Yes. Just 10. You say, well, it, can't, it couldn't be that hard to find 10. There wasn't 10. Yeah. There wasn't one, but there was not a single one in Israel. God would have spared the land of Israel for one righteous man, but there was none. There was not a man in the country of Israel that was righteous because there was not a man before them that was willing to stand on what was right. First off, we see, uh, well, we're again talking about a man that's willing to stand. We see a man with straight priorities, a man who's got his priorities in line. God's looking for a man that knows that one thing is needful. As it says in Luke chapter 10, verse number 42, it says, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful. One thing, and that thing is God. If we have any, if we have nothing else, but as long as we've got God, we're in pretty good shape. God doesn't want a man that's got his priorities mixed up. God will take, God will take second place to nothing. Nothing. If God is not the top priority in your life, you've got your priorities way out of line. If, you're a priori if your priorities are not God's priorities, you've got your priorities mixed up. If I let anything come between me and God, anything come between me and my personal relationship with God, it's my fault. God ain't moved. I'm the one that's put something in between. He wants nothing there. And he don't, he's not going to put anything that's going to come in between me and him. It's going to be me that puts something there. The Lord deserves to take priority over everything in our life. He deserves it. He deserves, he deserves first place in our life. Not our families, not our jobs, not our vehicles, not our houses, not all the blessings that we've got. We get so mixed up and we put the blessings before the blessings. We forget about God. We forget where all these things come from. Yes. Everything good in my life comes from God. There is not a bad thing in my life that has come from God. Yes. But there is not a good thing in this life that I have that has come from this world. Yes. Everything, this world is short-lived. Yes. It, it may be good for just a little while, but it eventually just goes away. Yes. Now, I already referenced uh, Luke chapter number 10, verse number 42. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Notice here that it says chosen. You have a choice on what you make your priority. God's not going to force himself to number one. God's not going to will himself to number one. You have to make God that priority. Every choice has consequences, good or bad. Every choice has consequences. If you make the wrong choice, there's going to be bad consequences. You make the right choice, there's going to be blessings that come along with it. That passion must be ignited, but it must also be championed. That passion is like a match. We heard uh, Brother Derek Wilson talking about that. That match, 
it can be struck, but it's got to be put in the right area yes. for it to be useful. Right. Yes. If not, it's just going to burn out, right. and if the fl flame's going to run out, yes. and it's going to be a waste of a match. Yes. Not only does this man need to have straight priorities, but also a man needs to have godly leadership yes. for his family. God has put the man in the role of the godly of the God leadership or the leadership in the family. That is the man's role. That is my role whenever I get married next week, which is still hard to think about. But I, that's going to be my place. That's Luke's place. That's Ryan's place. That's Jim Bob's. That's each and every one of you that is married. That is your place. You are the leadership. You're the spiritual leader of that family. Kids today need godly examples more than ever before. We see it more and more each and every day. Kids, kids, without, kids without parents or kids without parents that want anything to do with them. Kids that have parents that don't go to church. Kids that have the kids that are sold out to God. And glory to God that they are, but their parents aren't. Their parents are out in the world doing worldly things. If your kids see that God is optional for you, they'll see Him as unnecessary for them. They'll see, you as, they'll see Him as unnecessary. But God is, He is that needful thing. He is that one needful thing. That's what got Israel into trouble. This they put they, they put all these things before God. They their fathers before them put money, put all these parties, everything. They put that before God. They put all these things and they lost sight of what really mattered. God wasn't made a priority, so he deemed so he was deemed unnecessary for the future generation. It's time that we put our wants to the side and see what we need. And we need God. We need God now, tomorrow, each and every day. If we try to go one day without God, we're in, some, we're in a big mess. And we need men to lead the charge, to be a real man, to be real women of God, to be stand firm on what God has given us. Not only do we need a man with godly leadership, but we need a man who is willing to stand. To stand on what's right. To stand on this book. To stand on what God has said. And I'm not talking about just stand and move where you can still move around. I'm talking about put your feet in some concrete. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it's kind of not. It's kind of neat. But put your feet in some concrete. Let's Don't move. Be ready to stand no matter what comes. Say, devil, you can come at me with whatever, with whatever you got. Whatever you got, I'm standing right here. I'm standing on the Word of God. I'm standing behind my man of God. I'm standing for what God has given me. I'm standing with God. I'm standing where I'm at. Some hills are worth dying on. The hill of my family is worth dying on. The hill of my faith is worth dying on. The hill of my church is worth dying on. I'm willing to die for those things because that is what God has called us to do. We are to stand on what God has given us. If I die, I'm going to die giving it everything I got. Everything I got. I'm going to die with my guts spelled out on the battlefield somewhere, yet knowing that I've given God everything that I have. If I don't, I am a failure. I want to give God everything that I could possibly give Him. Yeah. Every ounce of energy in my body, every tear in my eyes, yeah. every ounce of blood in my body, I want it to be dedicated to God. Yeah. Yeah. There's no room for compromise. Right. No room for compromise. Yeah. Sometimes things, sometimes the things most worth doing in life are those that involve the greatest risk. And it's a risk standing on the right. We're going to be we're going to be ridiculed. We're going to be crucified with Christ, if you want to say that. We are going to be in a, put in hard spots, but we've got to make up our mind and stand. We've got to stand tonight, church. Mama, if you will come to the piano. Joshua. Chapter number 24, verse number 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, 
Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the, or the, gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Nothing else. God is number one. God is the Almighty. He is the one that is the true leader of this home. God is the one that takes priority. God is the Godhead. He is the head of this household. We're living in Joshua's day, folks. People look at you and say, who are you going to serve? What are you going to do? What's it going to be, Mama? What's it going to be, Daddy? What's it going to be, Grandma? What's it going to be, Grandpa? What are you going to stand on? Are you going to stand for your grandchildren, for your children? Give them a godly example to look up to. Are we going to fall? Are we going to bow to what this world wants? Are we going to stand on what God has given us? And what God has told us to stand? Let us all stand tonight. Are you willing to be that one? Are you willing to stand? No matter what the cost. No matter what the hard times bring. Are you willing to stand? Are you willing to stand on God's word? Willing to stand? Willing to give your all? People's looking at you, folks. People's got an eye out on you. People's watching you, seeing what you're going to do. They want to see where you're standing at. May we stand completely and totally, solely independent on God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, whatever you need tonight, God is more than able to meet it. Again, if that was for nobody else, that was for me. I needed that. The Lord really helped me studying today. And I know I'm preaching on the choir to, about standing, standing on what's right. And I thank the Lord that he surrounded me with people that do stand, that stand on what is right. And that's not budging. That's not moving. I thank the Lord for where he's placed me, all that he's blessed me with. He's good to me. Yeah. Want me to turn it back over to you? Yeah, we can go on.